Hey, welcome everybody. Thanks and glad you can make it. Uh, we have a really interesting panel for you today. We're going to be talking about one of our favorite subjects, uh, full frame sensor technology and how to best utilize it with the equipment that you've got. We've got a couple of guests with our Zeiss team here, Mark LaFleur and Brent Barbato, uh, both the ShareGrid and, and Old Flat, Old Fast Glass. Um, say that three times fast. Um, they're going to be helping us out here and we're going to have a, a conversation about uh, different lenses and, and camera technologies and, and how they go together to, to help you get the shot you're looking for. So without further ado, our host with the most, Mr. Snehal Patel from Zeiss in, the, in Sherman Oaks, uh, is going to take us through it. Snehal. Hi, how are you? My name is Snehal Patel. I'm the Cinema Sales Director for the Americas for Zeiss. And today we're just having a conversation. We're gonna ask some questions and get to the bottom of this uh, full frame thing because a lot of people haven't had a chance to use some of the newer camera technology coming out, but it's getting even more accessible with the advent of the FX9 and the C500 Mark II. Full frame technology is really spreading in the market at different price points. And of course, you already have DSLRs and they're already full frame. So now we have everything from the low end to middle to the high end. and Digital cinematography is really changing because of this new format. So we're gonna talk about it today. We're gonna to talk about how you can make use of it and what kind of lensing works with it. And you know, what are some of the questions that people have out there that wanna be answered. So let me first introduce to you two really great, amazing people. Mark LaFleur, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Hey everybody, um, I hope I'm unmuted right now. Um, my name's Mark, I am the owner of a, a rental house in Los Angeles, California called Old Fast Glass. Um, we specialize in lenses. Um, we have a lot of full frame lenses and we have a lot of uh, vintage lenses, which is kind of our thing. Um, and before that, uh, I was a cinematographer for years. Um, I still shoot, although I have less time to do so. Um, but now I have lots of time on my hands, um, to, uh, to shoot. And I am trying to take advantage of this downtime to shoot some more lens tests. One, one big thing, old fast glass um uh, loves to do is is educate uh, we like to get information out there whether it's through our instagram um or uh, our lens tests um the biggest ones um which we've done in collaboration with ShareGrid, uh which i'll let brent speak to um but we've we've now done three huge lens tests um and the latest one which we are still working on right now uh focused on many sets of full frame lenses um, and we're really excited to, um, uh, to give that to the cinematography community. Thank you, Mark. And now, of course, Brent Barbano. Can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Brent Barbano. Uh, been a cinematographer here in LA, uh, here in LA for almost 13 years. Um, I also co-founded ShareGrid, which some of you may know. Uh, it's a uh, online marketplace for renting equipment uh, to and from peers and and uh, companies with integrated insurance. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, excited to be here. Mark and I, you know, we've been good friends for a long time and collaborators for a very long time. And I think one of the reasons why we're here today is, yeah, because of the education that we've teamed up with uh, to put out to the masses for free. Um, we've now done three pretty big lens tests. Um, I don't want to, you know, reiterate everything Mark just said, but we're really excited to get the full frame version of our lens test out um, and get it out to all of you to, to hopefully uh, help you make better informed decisions uh, on your next project. Great, thanks. Um, so to get things started, we're going to start off with uh, a few little graphical things, right? So they'll put things into perspective and really give you a visual of what we're talking about so that we got everybody on the same page and hope everyone has a chance to see this. I'm sharing my screen right now and you can see that there's a sensor chart, comparison chart that's posted right now. Mm -hmm. And as you can tell, in digital sensors, there's so many different choices. I mean, the whole second row and uh, almost all of the third row of sensors there, they're all dubbed Super 35 in marketing speak, right? When, when the companies talk about them. So, but they're all different diameters. There are diagonals and they all have different kind of shapes uh, to them. And you have to really get to know, you know, what sensor you're using before you can jump into lensing because you need to understand the, the, the correlation between the two. So it's always a three-step process. One, find out what sensor size you're using. 
to find out, will my lens cover, will it project enough of an image to cover that sensor size? And number three, I wanna test to see what that looks like. And that's how these lens tests can help you because they can show you in that particular focal length what the framing looks like and what the characteristics of the lens are. And these formats, you know, they didn't just come out of thin air, they come out from our legacy of film. You know, we had film that ran sideways, 35 millimeter film that ran sideways. And uh, in certain motion picture cameras, it was called VistaVision and it ran the film sideways to create a larger frame size, but yet still be economical. It's not 65 millimeter film. You don't have to print 65 millimeter film or, or process it. It's still 35 millimeter film, but the frame is bigger. And that's where we got you know, VistaVision from back in the day. But the full frame format itself is from photography. It's from still film being run sideways. Motion picture film was generally run up and down in 99% of the cases, and therefore the frame size is smaller. So that's why we have motion picture film has always been a cropped size, and digital sensors reflect that. And as you can see with the APS-C size, uh, that was very close to what Super 35 film was. So everything has a legacy, everything comes from somewhere. And crop sensors or Super 35 size sensors come from film, and full frame also comes from film, but from photography. And the big difference between lenses is that lenses that were designed for full frame, like on the left, you know, will work with multiple sensors. It will cover the large full frame sensor and smaller sensors as well. But a lens created for a Super 35 size or a crop sensor would have trouble covering a larger sensor because the image that's coming out of the back of the lens is not meant to work within such a large size. So it didn't project as much out of the back. That doesn't mean that the focal length changes. In both of these cases, the focal length is exactly the same, 35 millimeter. So what you see within the crop square on both the full frame lens and the you know, crop sensor lens is exactly the same. So this could be an ultra prime on the right and a supreme prime on the left. If they're both 35 millimeter, what you see on an Alexa sensor within the blue uh, rectangle would be exactly the same, same frame. It's just that your look of the lens might be a little bit different. So we want to make sure that people understand this, what projection is. Projection is when the, out of the back of the lens, you're projecting something onto a flat plane. And then that flat plane can have a rectangle or a sensor within that area of projection. And that is what the correlation between camera and lens is in the present day with digital technology. Cool. So let's talk about that, Mark. Like um, when, you know, when you, you know, you, it's a full frame camera system. When you look at it, like uh, how do you know uh, how lenses are going to behave on it? How lenses are going to behave? Um, well, uh, can, um, can you rephrase that? Uh, I'm not meaning sure. That, like, uh, <clears throat> meaning like, like how much of a frame you're going to see, you know, mm -hmm. because let's say even if you grew up using a certain, you know, Airy or Panavision 35 millimeter film camera uh, and then started using Alexa and maybe Helium or something like that, each time your sensor size keeps changing. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I came at it um, almost in reverse. I When I was younger, I shot a lot of 35 millimeter still film um, with my, my dad's Pentax um, camera. So I sort of started my understanding of the way optics uh, work with um, format size uh, with full frame. So I, to me, when I saw a 50 millimeter lens on that Pent Pentax camera, I knew what that looked like. I knew how much of the world I was going to see. And then when I got into cinematography using um, cameras with a Super 35 um, format sensor, all of a sudden that 50 millimeter lens appeared a little bit cropped uh, when, when compared to the, um, the full frame 35 millimeter film that I, I kind of learned on. So I had to get used to that. I had to get used to the idea of, okay, um, if, I want the, if I want the field of view, I'm sort of accustomed to getting with a 50 millimeter lens on a full frame sensor. I, um, when I'm shooting super 35, I actually need something closer to like a 35 millimeter lens to get a little bit wider field of view on that smaller sensor. So I think that's really important because a lot of times people that they don't maybe understand those differences, um, especially from like a rental house perspective, they might want to shoot, let's say super 35 or, or an even smaller format, like super 16. And let's say they request, uh, just a few lenses from me, like a 35 millimeter, a 50 millimeter, an 85 millimeter. I asked them, is 35 wide enough 
you know, do you like how wide do you need to get for your shots? Um, because in that format, you might you might need a wider focal length on Super 35. You might want a 24 millimeter lens to have a wider field of view. Um, and then it, it sort of goes the other way where I had someone um, that really knew what um, an airy um, ultra prime 8R looked like in Super 35. And they wanted to get that same ultra wide field of view um, on, in, uh, on a, an Alexa LF. And luckily there was a, a 12 millimeter lens um, that covered full frame made by this company, Laua. Um, and I recommended that to them because it's almost the same field of view um, that 12 millimeter Laua has on a full frame camera as that eight millimeter lens has on Super 35. So it's really important to know um, a little bit of, uh, a lot about the format um, of the camera you choose because it's really going to um, reflect what what lenses you need to choose, how wide they are, how long they are, um, as well as the speed of the lens. Um, Cause you also have to, you know, account for depth of field um, and how, how much you want to be able to put your background out of, out of focus in, re in relation to your subject. And Brent, you know, when you were setting up the new lens test, because you've done like three really involved lens tests, it's multiple days, there's a set, uh, this time, you know, you made a comment that your set changed, right? Because you were seeing things a little bit differently and the wide angle lenses, you're going to see a lot more than you were before. So you had to do something different this time. Yeah, it's, it's funny. And Mark and I, I think Good we had point. a couple, couple moments in the, in the lens test because, you know, mind you, we've done two before, two lens tests before, which accounted for, what was that, 20 sets before we even jumped into the full frame lens test. So we had done this quite a lot and we are really familiar with like the layout of the room and where our model is and where the lighting is and uh, all the elements that we put in the background, but we had never shot at full frame. So when we, <laughs> when we put on our first full frame lens, we were like, whoa, oh, okay. So we can see our negative fill over here. We can see our, you know, our fill light over here. We can see our bounce. We can see this C stand, this light. Um, and we could see that wall that we couldn't see before. And it was, and we, we laughed because we're like, well, duh, yeah, this is what full frame is. It's a, it, you know, it essentially, essentially you're getting a, you know, a wider field of view. So, um, so it definitely changed. I, I mean, we couldn't change the test for it. That's the whole point of the test. We want people to see that now you can see more of the room versus super 35. Uh, so we left it as is, I mean, I think we moved a couple stands, right, Mark? But like we had to kind of, we kind of just let the world live. Like when we would pan left and right, you know, in yeah. our tests, you, you're going to see our lights. Like there's just no way around it because, um, I mean, it's just, it's just inherent in, in, in the lensing. So. Yeah, we, we, um, we had to keep everything exactly the same, like where yeah. the lights are placed, where the model is placed, like Distance. Brent said. Yeah. But we, yeah, it did. We had a, a good conversation about, um, you know, which focal length should we include in the test? We, we are limited. And I want to say right out to everyone who, who sees the test and is hoping for a, a different that we shoot a different T-stop or a different focal length. It, it would be our dream to test every lens at every T-stop. We are limited to just simply how much time we had. Um, and, we, and we wanted the, the lens test to be uh, backwards compatible with our Super 35 vintage lens test, which for the most part on those um, lenses, we, the, about the widest we went was 18 millimeter. Um, we had a couple 14 millimeter lenses, 15 millimeter lenses in there. And then for anamorphic, the widest we went was about 24, 25 millimeter, which has a similar horizontal field of view of about 12 uh, uh, millimeters. So very wide. Um, so we knew we wanted to at least get 18 millimeter full frame lenses in there um, because most of the sets did offer an 18 millimeter. And then people have the ability to compare an 18 millimeter full frame lens to an 18 millimeter, you know, super 35, uh, sorry, format. Um, which is really important to us. But yes, we didn't go any wider. If we put a 14 millimeter full frame lens on there, you'd, you'd see the AC, you'd see, you'd see, <laughs> you'd see a lot of like, we basically tent off the room. So you just see a lot of really like black uh, flags in the shots. Um, and, and there's, it's not, a, not as um, relevant of a comparison. So we want to make sure we went as wide as 18 and we went as long as 85 millimeter. Um, basically around the focal lengths were roughly 18 uh, 25, 35, 50, 75, 85, depending on the set. Um, that, and that was all we could really have time for as well. <laughs> as a full no, I mean, uh, and let's, let's define, you know, this whole thing about lens equivalency, you know, the field of view. But before I go any further, 
for all, those of you that joined us a little bit later, down below there's a chat button. You can ask us questions in the chat and we're gonna choose questions. So Andrew Fan, you're up next. We're gonna go for your question in just a minute. Uh, but let me uh, first uh, define this whole thing about lens equivalency. The, what happens with the larger sensor is when you have a larger sensor, you're, you're gonna now naturally see more, right? So I'm gonna put that um, graphic up one more time just so people can see that in reference. You're gonna see more because of the lens. So now you gotta think about that if I wanted the same frame as before, if I wanted a, a tight close up on somebody, you know, mm -hmm. what focal length lens do I have to use? Maybe if you were 10 feet away and used, a, a, you know, an 85 millimeter before, if you were seven feet away, using an 85 millimeter before, now with the larger sensor size, you're going to see more. So if you want the same narrower angle of view, you're going to have to jump to a longer focal length of lens, right? Yep. You're going to have to jump to like a 100 millimeter to make sure you get that same tight angle of view. The issue is that once you do that, now you change your... Um, you know, you're changing kind of the depth perception, you're changing depth of field and a couple other things. And I think the misnomer that people have that automatically when you have a larger sensor, you have shallower depth of field, that's not the case. It's because you tend to use a longer focal length of lens, you know, with your system. So every time that you were thinking before, just like you mentioned, Mark, you know, if you use an 18 millimeter in Super 35, now that when you go to full frame, you might use a 21 for the exact st same style shot, but now you're gonna have straighter lines, less distortion, it's mm -hmm. gonna be a cleaner image, and you're gonna have a shallower depth of field, right? Is that correct? Yes, yes, um, except for maybe distortion because distortion is really depending on the optical design, not just a wide angle versus a long lens. Long lenses, every focal length can have more distortion, but yes, every, everything else, yeah, 100%. <laughs> or, Right, like you, if you want to get the same field of view, you know, or, or I, I guess if, I guess I should say, if you want to have your subject relative, relatively the same size, now you have to actually change the distance between you and your subject, which changes right. everything as well. Or, or the focal length. Yes. Or, the focal or the focal length. length. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Not just, yeah, not just focal length, but also your distance is a huge aspect of of everything we're talking about. Yeah, and I think the one of the nice things about the full frame format is that honestly you can be closer to your subject with that focal length than before right yeah. so in this case this 21 millimeter in the crop sensor size might have been too tight right and you might have been like oh well i need to see more i want to see that i can't see this guy holding his guitar with a 25 millimeter at this distance but a 25 millimeter on a full frame at this distance you could see everything just fine right mm -hmm. and you see a lot more so longer focal lengths of lenses like even an 85 mil allow you to be really close to your subject uh, and be more intimate so people always get the means big vistas and big outdoors but i always tell people when you're running through an alley you can have a 16 or 18 millimeter lens but again it's going to be more of a barrel shape mm -hmm. so you know mm -hmm. even though mark mentioned before it's dependent on lens design there's no getting out of the fact that in a series of lenses different focal lengths an 18 will always have more distortion than a 21, no matter what, in that same series. Not, not from manufacturer to manufacturer, but within that same series of glass. So if I was running through a favela with a, a 16 or 18 millimeter before, now I can run through with a 21 millimeter and my lines are a lot straighter than they were before. And my kids' uh, legs don't distort like they are on this lens <laughs> right now. Mm -hmm. you know, this is like making me look like I have a huge uh, gauntlet arm, but... Uh, that this is what lenses do, you know, this is the, the nature of, of, of focal lengths. Yeah, and it changes your style too, like especially if you're doing like a doc series or something and you're, you know, you're running and gunning. I mean, it's going to change the way you shoot and the way you interact with your subject. Um, I keep coming back to distance, but I think that's a huge part of it. If, you know, you're filming a really intimate scene, you know, now you have to think about how your distance has changed and how you're interacting with your subject, but yet, it frees you up to get a, a, a beautiful image, but not having to be, you know, at a, you know, maybe you can't get the distance that you would need uh, on Super 35. So um, it changes your whole style. I mean, it's, it's subtle, but it's definitely, it's definitely changes a lot of the way we shoot now, which I find fascinating as a, as a tool. Absolutely. Great. So we're going to take a question from Andrew, Andrew Fan. Uh, we're going to unmute you so that you can ask a question in person. You can uh, feel free to start your video if you like. Cool. Hey, um, 
So the question I had, because so I shoot uh, medium format photography. Um, so um, from my understanding of medium format, um, like an 80, I have an 80 millimeter from my Mamiya 7.2. That generally um, equivalents to a 39 to a 40 millimeter on on medium format. Um, and I also, under, but then for some other lenses for like a 6.45 um, um, medium format versus 6 six by 9 some of those lens um, equivalencies change. And so I'm wondering for large format um, cinema cameras, I, know, I understand that some sensors are bigger than others, some are smaller, and does that change the equivalency of those lenses? Um, I, uh, I, I can touch upon that a little bit. I um, shot medium format uh, stills for a long time. I uh, had a, a, a Mamiya 645, so I, I was really familiar with, with that format. And um, as, when, when you talk about you know, equivalency, um, if you're trying to get an image with the, with the same field of view, um, the larger the sensor size, the larger the film format, the longer the focal length you will need to get that same field of view. So yeah, I, I, if, I, don't, I don't have like the, the calculator on me, so I apologize if this is 100% accurate, but yeah, I believe in my 645 um, camera, a, what would be considered like a normal lens, uh, a lens that sees the world very much similar to how our eyes see, like a 50 millimeter um, in full frame, was roughly an 80 millimeter in, in um, in medium format. And for instance, a fisheye lens, um, a, a lens that has extreme distortion, um, sees 180 degrees. A fisheye lens, like for full frame, is uh, 16 millimeter. Um, a fisheye lens for a much larger medium format still um, sensor, like a six by six, six millimeter by six millimeter, would be um, something like a 24 or, 30, or a, 35, a 30 millimeter lens, would give you a fisheye effect. So the larger the sensor, the longer the focal length you have to get to achieve the same field of view. Um, and it's, it's confusing because medium format sounds like it's smaller than large format. <laughs> right. um, for, <laughs> yeah. for cinematography, the, this term, and full frame is even, it can be a little bit misleading. In, in cinematography, um, full frame or large format, which is, is, is used a lot, or VistaVision is bigger than Super 35. But what um, Andrew's talking about with medium format still photography is actually a lot bigger um, than, than full frame. Medium format is closer to a, like Alexa 65 size sensor. And then there's large format in stills is, is four by five centimeter film and eight by 10, like what Ansel Adams used. So um, there's so much terminology between the cinematography and the photography world that helps right. confuse things, which is again, Snehal said at the beginning, if you're not familiar and you are starting off with a, a new camera system, a new format size, that's why it's really important to to test, including potentially using your medium format lenses on that camera to see what you know field of view you're getting, especially if you if you sort of like the look, like the character, the way the flares are, the way the bokeh is of your medium format lenses, you can still use those for full frame. You can still use those for super 35. You may run out of wide angle lenses. You may not be able to get a wide angle um, lens that can give you a really wide angle of view. Um, but uh, but you know you can still use those lenses. Sorry, I kind of went on a tangent there. No, oh, that, that was great. That, helped, that was Andrew. awesome. <laughs> that, was that was really, great. really good. Sne Snehal was just showing, let's see your, you have your camera right there, right? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I have here a medium format. So this is a Hasselblad and he's absolutely right. So the lens that's sold as the normal lens is the 80 millimeter Zeiss lens that came with this Hasselblad 500 series camera. The thing is when you say medium format, um, that can mean a lot of things because medium yep. format for this camera is different in size. The frame size is actually different than my RB67 from Mamiya, which is a little bit larger. It's a six by seven. So, you know, the, it's all different formats. So I'm gonna bring up that chart one more time to help you out because I think that this is, and by the way, we're gonna be able to share this presentation that I'm showing you afterwards so everyone has it. But look at all the different sensor sizes. They're all vastly different from one another. Right. So e even when you say full frame, the Sony Venice is actually Full frame. That's the only true full frame, 24 by 36. Alexa LF in open gate mode is slightly bigger. It's actually the size of what VistaVision, the Paramount's VistaVision cameras, the film cameras, about the same size as that. And Red Monstro is wider and not as tall. So mm -hmm. they're all vastly different and they're all going to give you different results with the exact same lens. You're going to see a little bit more or a little bit less of the world. And again, just like this.
You know, depending on your sensor size, you see more or less of this world created by the lens itself. Right. Yep. Cool. Great question. Uh, we have another good question from Joe A. So let's go ahead and uh, ask uh, Joe A to come on and ask his question. Is it Joe Joe Adams? Yeah. What's up, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> Joe Adams. Joe Adams was our photographer and just helped out on on our last two lens tests. So Joe's awesome. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. All sorry. right. Sorry, guys. I'm comfy on my couch. All right. So my my the question is, uh, so shooting a uh, super 35 mode on cameras that can do uh, uh, mode be like full frame, like the S1H. Uh, the, I think the Canon C500 uh, does it now. You can do like super 35 mode uh, on your full frame uh, sensor. Now, does that does that change anything, or is it um, like shooting on a true super 35 sensor? Does or is it just a cropped in full frame? I I don't know the specs it, of, of those cameras. I mean, some of them crop and some of them some of them don't. And this is another just just a great question because it opens up a lot. Um, I think one of the most amazing things about um, having these larger, um, these cameras with these larger sensors is to be, to be able to window in mm -hmm. and use different um, portions of the sensor um, for different looks, for different reasons. Like on that camera that, that Joe's talking about, um, when you use the Super 35 function, I believe on that camera it is actually windowing in. You're using a smaller, using the center uh, Super 35 area of a much larger sensor. Um, and what that does is it also, that opens up the door, you know, to a lot of super 35 lenses. It opens up the door to maybe anamorphic lenses that wouldn't cover the full sensor also. And red has been, you know, pioneering this for years. Um, mm -hmm. one of the advantages of windowing in is when you use a smaller part of the sensor, now you can generally speaking, not all cameras, but you can tend to use higher frame rates. Yeah. Um, because you're, you're, you know, you're, you're just pushing less data, um, onto those cards. So while you want to maybe shoot, um, you know, use the full sensor, you might only be, you might tap out at like 60 frames per second on the camera, but then you window in and use the center, um, HD portion, super 35 portion of the sensor or 4k, depending on it. Now you might be able to shoot at a much higher frame rate, like 120 frames per second. And I love that more manufacturers are doing this. The new Canon C300. I mean, C500 Mark II, I think they did it really well where they have 5.7K full frame, 4K Super 35, and I believe 2K Super 16. So now you've got one camera that can utilize all these different lens formats. And that's one of the most amazing things to cinematographers is all these different lens formats have different, you know, um, advantages. Like if you do shoot that smaller sensor, you might have a smaller lens or a faster lens, which is better for maybe documentary or low light shooting. Um, so I, that's one of my favorite things about all of this is these larger sensors, when you window in, you open up yourself to higher frame rates, different frame rates, different lens options, different creative choices as well. And, and also one thing to keep in mind, just like with film, is now you, you're also opening yourself up to, you know, not as shallow a depth of field technically, uh, depending on how you shoot. And then also more noise, more grain structure. Um, you know, as a, as the pixels, I guess, it, in a sense, are getting bigger on your on your frame. So that's something Absolutely. also to keep in mind if, if you're shooting on the Super 16 mode. You know, I did that as a test with Canon in their C700 full frame, and it was beautiful. It had like a documentary feel to it, but it was it was a lot noisier than than in the full frame mode. And that's also something to keep in mind when you're jumping between um, these different uh, these different um, uh, settings. But yeah, Mark, I, I think you're I think you you hit it right on the head. That was yeah exactly. And it's it is Joe. Another reason Joe's question is great is that there are also cameras that um, you can use a, a smaller in resolution, you know, HD as opposed to 4K or whatever. But it it is actually still using the entire sensor. Uh, the mm -hmm. Alexa Mini LF is a good example of that. They have they have a 2K um, setting that almost uses the entire. Um, full frame uh, sensor and uh, another one. And this is why you need to test something like we have the, yep. we have at, the, at higher frame rates too. that 2k gives you yeah. much higher. That's the, exactly. I think the whole idea behind it is exactly. that you still get the bigger format look, but yep. higher, higher frame, frame rates. So, yep. so you got to test cause it's so confusing, yep. you know, all these different yep. settings, but generally if you can crop in, it's exactly like what Mark said, as soon as you have the ability to crop in, now you could use lenses 
that don't have the larger image circle so you can be more creative. And also I've seen cinematographers on set with the helium camera or the monster or something creatively use that, that crop. Because they're like, hey, look, I want to just pop in just a little bit more than I am right now, but I don't want to physically move the camera. I don't want to reset. Everything's perfect. All I want to do is if I just crop the sensor a little bit, it'll literally feel like I just moved in a little bit. Yeah, digitally zooming in. Seeing, yep. Mm -hmm, digitally zooming in because you're, you know, you're, you're, you're playing on the same TV. You're playing in the same theater screen at the end of the day. So even if you crop in. And we've seen like um, what's really important about uh, this crop idea for Sony for the Venice, the big reason that Venice is a success is that in Super 35 crop mode, it's still 4K. And then when you go out to the larger sensor size, it's 6K. Right. So that means that you qualify for Amazon, Netflix, and a lot of streaming services like that, Apple TV, because you can at least, as a cinematographer, give 4K resolution, even with Super 35 lenses. And that's a limitation of the Alexa technology up until now, that they don't have a dense sensor. Their sensor technology has bigger pixel pitch. So therefore, it took a Alexa LF or LF Mini to be able to get 4K because you needed to have larger lenses, you needed to have a full frame format for that particular sensor technology. But RED and Sony and Canon and others have shown you could have smaller pixel pitch, more denser pixels and more, and more resolution on a smaller size. Yep. Cool. Question. So we got a question from Kyle Roberts. Am I on? Am I good? Yes, yep. you are. Okay, cool. So I'm shooting more run and gun, dock, you know, small crew stuff. And I'm just curious with full frame, what do you guys recommend in the world of Zoom? Well, other than your Canon L, you know, like your standard. What, I mean, what, what camera do you have? Um, well, C500 Mark II, for instance, if I was renting that from somewhere like ShareGrid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, Snail, you know better than anyone, Zeiss makes uh, full frame uh, zooms that are, that are very lightweight, the compact zooms, and they are very familiar. Boom. And I'm not just, I'm not just saying, Zeiss did, didn't no, they're beautiful. Did this. this old, setup. old Fast Glass has the, this, these three zooms on our, on our shelves available to rent because they are small. And they cover full frame, and they're 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 really great range of focal lengths, especially the 28 to 80. It's an amazing lens in in full frame. 28 millimeter is pretty wide, and for for doc, you you might find yourself like backed into the corner in a small room, and, and you you know you got a couple people in frame, you got to get them all in. 28 millimeter is pretty wide, and going to 80 millimeter, you can still get a, a decent close up. Um, they're fairly fast lenses. Uh, they don't breathe. They're sharp. Um, so they're they're are not a ton though of full frame um, no. zooms option uh, options out there. I, I will say Zeiss is one of the few um, that's out there. I think, uh, sorry, Snehal uh, Fujinon came out with the Permistas um, mm -hmm. that, that are, um, that are uh, there's a 28 to 100 and a, um, 80 to 300 that cover full frame. Uh, there's really not a lot of full frame zoom options. I had to do a product a commercial um and we we need the clean and sharp lenses but it was you know like everything nowadays super ambitious and it was the schedule was insane and i rented these from mark because i was like i need i need zooms that are sharp and accurate and clean um and they were perfect they were beautiful and they were lightweight and we, our setups were super super fast and just move it around uh was was very helpful with those lenses and they were they were great so yeah i i, I second that they're great lenses yeah, and there and there's uh, also other manufacturers that make um, lenses that they converted. So the lenses that were for Super 35 that they might have put some optics in there to kind of expand the image to cover the larger sensor. So there are those, but purpose-built, full-frame, lightweight zooms. It's you're right. It's very few in the world, and Zeiss is very proud to, uh, yeah. to have this set. It's a great set of lenses for yep. sure. Um, and then yeah, please try them out uh, for full frame. They, they're available. Cool. Uh, question from Avid. I don't know if that's the editing software is asking us questions or if it's a person named Avid. We'll soon find out. Hello, hello. If, I'm using a desktop, no camera, sorry. Do, they, okay. do we have their question? Yeah, In we text? do have their question. So, yeah. so if, I, if I use a Super 35 lens on a full frame 35 in the most open shot, I'll have black on the edges of the frame. 
So what they're asking is if they use the lens meant for um, Super 35, they're, I think they're asking if this is actually a, a true representation or not. Let me just put that graphic back up um, of, of what they're gonna see. This is not necessarily a true representation of what they're gonna see. Uh, they, they, instead of seeing a, a hard black edge, they might see a fall off, right? You know, at the edge of the, the, uh, the edge will be soft. Um, it's not going to be this harsh black necessarily, but it could mm -hmm. be. It could, it could be like uh, uh, on certain focal lengths of lenses, maybe on the wider side, uh, you use the lens for meant for on like on the right side, what he's talking about is the, the case on the right side where the lens was meant for crop sensor, but you used it on a full frame. Yes, you might see a porthole effect and you might see black altogether. Now, did you know, like if you guys are used to shooting Canon EF mount, you notice that you can get a camera like the 40D that you can take two different mounts on, right? You can use your Canon L series glass, or you can use the less expensive lenses, the crop sensor lenses, okay? But as soon as you jump to a 5D, you can only use the L series uh, lenses, correct? You can't use the other lenses, the crop sensor lenses on the camera. There's no way to mount it actually on the camera physically. They do that for a reason because a full frame lens you, you can use in the Canon system on both 5D or a crop sensor, but a crop sensor lens you can't easily use on larger sensor. This, so that's why that-, that Right, is this is, um, and this is uh, something that um, we get asked at Old Fast Glass all the time because uh, cinematographers have, they have got favorite lenses and a lot of, uh, especially we do a lot of vintage lenses, they, uh, older lenses, a lot of people are really obsessed with them. And now that we have these larger sensors and not even full frame, even sensors like uh, a Red Dragon uh, at 6K or uh, Alexa Mini at Open Gate are just a little bit larger than what a lot of these older Super 35 lenses were meant to cover. So you'll see just like dark corners or a little more vignetting. And then on some lenses, you'll see a hard, you know, porthole effect. Um, but un unfortunately, it's not as simple as a yes or no for will this Super 35 lens cover full frame because there are exceptions and this is why we test. We actually had someone come to us that wanted to use Cook Speed Pancros um, on the Alexa LF and they, they know they're going to be shooting 239. So we did a test. We tested the whole set from 18 millimeter up to 100 millimeter and 18 25, 32 did not cover, did not illuminate the sensor. There was hard black circles, just like you see in that graphic. But the 40, 50, 75, and 100 all covered. So there, and, and it's, and it's, so then you can see there's a correlation sort of between wide angle and longer lenses. Longer lenses tend to have a larger Im image circle when compared to wider lenses. Um, but there's exceptions to that too. There's the Tokina 11 to 20 millimeter F uh, 2.8, and there's a Cine version of it. It just so happens to cover full frame from about 13 and a half, 14 millimeter to 20 millimeter. It's not what it was designed for. It was designed for Super 35, but it covers. Why? Because people like me that are obsessive test all these lenses and see, you know, what their possibilities are. And then when you do that, you tend to see sort of beyond what the lens was intended to shoot. And the, the edges tend to be a little bit softer. You might see more distortion, uh, more vignetting towards the edges. And some people really like that effect. Yeah. So if you do love, lenses that aren't necessarily designed for full frame, it might be worth testing them to see if they cover because you might be surprised that some of them actually do. Yep. That's true. Absolutely. But again, test, 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 because yep. now you test and you're like, hey, I, you know, this is what happened to Claudia Miranda. Let's talk about a real case scenario. Claudia Miranda filming, um, you know, uh, um, the new Top Gun movie, Maverick. And he really loves Master Primes. He's been using Master Primes for years. So he wanted to use Master Primes, but the movie called for more resolution. So they're using the Venice in 6K mode. So a larger sensor size. They did a complete test of Keslo camera and they found that certain focal lengths of Master Prime series, like the, like the 32 and, I, and the uh, 65 didn't work, but the 50 did and then the other focal lengths worked, but they didn't have anything on the Y. So they had to find another lens manufacturer to fill in the why. So he always shoots for many years, he's always shot, uh, you know, Primo, uh, Fujinon Zoom and Master Prime lenses. He was able to use some of the, uh, the uh, Fujinon lens kind of premier focal length uh, yeah. areas. And then he was able to use some of the Master Prime and then he had to mix another manufacturer and to kind of fill in the gaps on the wide end. So it's really interesting. He would have rather had a series of lenses 
that looked exactly like the master prime, but full frame. Now, the thing is with the Supreme Primes, he did a test, but even then, when we first came out with the lenses, we had 25 through 100. So we had six focal lengths and it wasn't enough for what he wanted to do. And he wanted to test wider and we didn't have it at the time. So now we have a 21, now we have an 18 and 15 coming out as well. But, you know, at the time it didn't work for him. So this is a real thing. You know, people yeah. really face this issue. All when, when we were in post-production for our anamorphic lens tests, you know, uh, Greg Frazier of ASC reached out through our, our friend Jay Holbin to look at our footage because he was in prep for, I believe it was Vice, the, the movie that he shot two years ago now. Um, and we sat with him for three hours going through every clip. Uh, and that helped him literally just like at least – pare down from at that we had 13 sets in that in that test of so 13 sets to at least two two sets that he knew for a fact that he wanted to then go ahead and go to a rental house and then do his own his own actual tests um and that's a great example right there these are some of the best dps in the game and they don't have the time necessarily to do extensive testing like this but they'll do whatever they can and they need they don't know they don't have all the answers they have to look at every set to determine what's best for the project and that could be you know in, in your example you know claudia wanted um sharp you know sharp lenses you know frazier did not he wanted something that was soft and more maybe a little more flattering i guess you can say to you know skin tones and uh and there's a lot of prosthetics in that show in that movie too um and so he was looking well, for something times are not sharp by the way when they're wide open well <laughs> yeah. sure you know yeah sure at, at uh t4 t28 yeah absolutely. yeah but yeah but, um yeah but i think he... the way he was using them yeah but he, yeah he, you were right he wanted cleaner lines and he did have a vfx heavy show he, so he usually he has had, a lot of vfx has, yeah exactly so he had um, a certain requirement for it absolutely Right. It, but it, it, the testing, you know, is, it's about those, those flaws now that you have in, in if you want to call it, you know, vintage lenses and, and the characteristics that you see, the way they flare, um, you know, distortion, uh, you know, vignetting, et cetera. And that's was, that was a lot of what he was looking for in, the, in that test. And that's what helped him to, to determine what set he wanted to go with on Vice. And, um, and in, sorry to interrupt, but you, in our, in our most recent full frame lens test, um, we had a, a situation where um, we had a, a one focal length in a set that didn't cover full frame. Um, that was the, uh, the Canon K35s. Uh, yeah. um, and there's been a lot of, you know, one of the reasons that um, Brent and I, Shergard and I on Old Fast Glass want to get these tests out there is to just get accurate information. And there were people in, you know, um, chat forums and stuff that were saying like, oh, all the K35s cover, but there were a lot of people that were saying the 18 millimeter did not cover full frame. And I made a point that even though it doesn't cover, I wanted to include it in the lens test just to have this like final say of like, here it is, like it, see for yourself how much it covers because it does cover beyond Super 35. It will not Ill illuminate an entire full frame sensor, but there it is where the rest of the set covers full frame. Um, and so again, this is why things like our lens test and lens testing in general is really helpful now that we have got these new formats and these new uh, larger uh, sensors out there. No, and, no, let's go on, back to, let's go back to, sorry, uh, didn't mean sure. to interrupt, Brent. Go right ahead. Sure. Well, I just, just jump on that. I think it's also important to note, I mean, though it's not ideal, if you love that lens and it's just not covering, it's not the end of the world. I mean, I do know people that will just win that will just window and they'll, they'll digitally mm -hmm. crop in. If they love that lens, they love its characteristics and, and they, they say, okay, it doesn't cover a full frame, but it's just, just a little, you know, a little bit of harsh vignetting. I can just window in and post. I know, I know a lot of people that do that too. Um, it doesn't mean that you absolutely can't use that lens. Um, I think that's also. Important. Yeah. Which is a, Important and once again to test because even if you let's say cover, what does that mean? Now that again, at the end of the day, let's all be honest, it's an opinion, right? Because right. you could right. have a you could have a lens like you just mentioned K35s. I know for a fact that the exposure difference, even at T4, the exposure difference from center to edge on a full frame sensor will be very harsh in comparison to the way the lens falls off on a super 35 size sensor, crop sensor, because from center to the edge of a crop sensor. Uh, you know, the lens performs really well, actually. Uh, and it's just that when you go past it, it starts to get muddy. So not only will you get darker on the edges, you'll definitely lose a lot of focus and performance. 
okay? So it has to be acceptable for you at the end of the day. Uh, you can say that, yes, I love my favorite vintage lenses, I wanna use it, but if the vintage lens is not giving you the performance you want, what does that mean? That means that if you had two characters talking to one another, one might be out of focus the whole time, okay? So be aware of that, of what you're getting into. You yep. could have a lens meant for a crop sensor that you use for on the larger sensor, but again, on this side of the frame, you're gonna be completely out of focus, you know? And you won't be able to do a two shot the way that you plan. So you have to think in your storyline, what is it the situations I'm getting into yep. and how will I get around that as well? That's very important. Yeah. All right, so since you, uh, Brett, you talked about anamorphic, we're gonna jump to Josh Fletcher. He's got an anamorphic question, which I think is very important um, to understand. Uh, yeah, uh, so Mark did touch on anamorphic, which is really helpful. Um, basically, I'm just looking on a lot of websites and I see that they're split, the lenses are split into three categories, full frame, super 35 and anamorphic. And so if someone could talk a little bit about what anamorphic is and like how it affects the size of the sensor that it covers, uh, that'd be great. Mark, I'll let you take that one. Um, okay. Um, definitely do, uh, I'm not going to do this justice. I would definitely urge a deep dive on Google to go into all the, the history of it, why it came to be and all that. Um, but it, it basically came from, you know, movie theaters trying to compete with television, get people back in movie theaters. Let's give people, um, more resolution, uh, you know, use more of the negative, um, because there's, you know, when you're, when you're projecting an image like Snehal's, um, graphics show, it's a circular image. So if you crop, widescreen from that, you're getting rid of all that information on the top and bottom. When you use an anamorphic lens, um, when you use an anamorphic lens, it's much closer to really a square crop that you're using. And then the, there's cylindrical elements that squeeze the image into, that fit more, a, a wider field of view than you could have got um, into that image and fill up the height of that sensor. And then when you de-squeeze that image in post, um, you now have your widescreen um, aspect ratio, but you don't have to crop to get it. You're not throwing away resolution. And these days, uh, it took a little while, uh, Red Dragon and then um, Alexa Mini, um, to have sensors that really took advantage of, of anamorphic lenses, which is why you didn't see a ton of anamorphic shooting, I feel like, in digital until some of these larger um, sensors came out, like Alexa's first 4x3 sensor, where we were doing it, yes, it's nice to get that additional resolution, but DPs were also doing it because they just like the inherent look of um, anamorphic lenses as well. They, they have oval-shaped bokeh, and they've got these big streaking lens flares, and they, they completely see the world in a different way than spherical lenses, and it's a look that a lot of people like. Um, and so uh, they're, they're grouped into these different, you're seeing these different formats because it does, it does bring in a whole, a whole host of other issues with um, compatibility. Uh, cameras like these, these, um, these uh, large format sensors, um, they kind of, a lot of them go actually beyond what even anamorphic lenses can cover. So to, to take full advantage of an anamorphic um, projected image, you need about an 18 millimeter tall sensor to take full advantage of it. Well, the Venice, the LF, they're up, 24 millimeter tall sensor. So you will see just like in those other um, images you saw of that porthole effect, a lot of legacy anamorphic lenses will not cover that whole um, sensor. So again, we're in this kind of demand where people now are looking for full frame anamorphics that have an even larger image sensor. And so that's why you're also going to see people are introducing large format anamorphic lenses that have different squeeze ratios. A lot of the, one of the most common squeeze ratio is a two times squeeze. Mm. And you're seeing like Cook um, came out with anamorphic lenses that are 1.8 times squeeze because you're taking uh, essentially a three by two um, aspect ratio sensor on the Venice or, a, or an LF. Um, and if you want to de-squeeze that to 240, a 1.8 squeeze factor actually takes full advantage of all those pixels without cropping anything. Um, but again, we're finding ourselves in a, in a time where we're sort of um, short on options to cover that. Um, so the, 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 this, this um, full frame and, and anamorphic crashing into each other are bringing up kind of a, a new host of, of problems of compatibility. And hopefully exciting solutions. Yeah, new lenses, yeah. new lenses, yeah. new formats. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, but anamorphic is exciting for people because of the kind of the, the look it gives, which you touched upon a little bit, Mark, 
Um, it, it is different when you're squeezing from two to one. It really is, there is a difference to it. So uh, that look is what, what people are going for. They're trying to figure out what they're trying to do you know, with their vision because your vision, your perceptual vision sees things in such a way, right? Like we're, we're, you're putting blinders on when you're super 35, right? You're always doing this to kind of frame everything up. In Vista Vision, it gets a little bit bigger. The anamorphic, it's even the perceptional view is actually two to one, right? So it's two wide to, to one tall. And that's exactly, you know, when you get a two to one lens uh, in anamorphic, that's what it does. And I think that's really interesting that, that you have like the 1.8 squeeze from Cook because they're really trying to make use of the sensor and resolution, trying to get as much resolution onto mm -hmm. the sensor as possible. Because on the Alexa, if you saw from the graphic I had just up, as soon as you go to anamorphic, you're actually using a smaller, it's not as wide as before what you're using on a sensory recording wise. It's tall, but it's not as wide. So you do drop some pixels yep. um, to get there for sure. Yep. Yeah. And that's why there was the 1.33 squeeze anamorphic, which was for really 16, interesting. For 16.9 yeah. sensors. For 16.9 sensors, meant mm -hmm. to be used like on RED cameras, F55, Alexa, using 16.9 format, not the anamorphic format, which allowed you just basically to record a sl slight, slight, uh, slight squeeze instead of a two to one squeeze. It was a 1.33 to 1. And what it to the long the short answer to all that is it all most of it these days it's a little bit about style but it's it's mostly about utilizing the entire sensor to get a wide screen aspect ratio without cropping. You're squeezing um, and stretching instead of cropping. This is is the the biggest reason for it. Right. Right. Cool. Let's uh, jump to Matthew Boric. Uh, who I think you guys know already. Yeah. I do. Got a question. Hey Matt. Hi guys, thanks for hosting this, it's been great. I'm curious what camera was chosen for the full frame lens test and why you chose it with all the different sensor sizes available, you know, what, what did you guys pick? Uh, we went with the uh, Alexa LF, uh, two of them. Uh, one of the, re I mean, there's a number of reasons why, but we, our previous lens test, we had already shot on the Alexa Mini. So we wanted to keep it in the same family and keep it in the same sensor, uh, rel you know, in terms of color science and whatnot, so that it could be as, as close to the apples to apples test as possible. Um, and uh, yeah, and Eric came on also as a, as, a, as a partner, like Zeiss did to help us out and gave us two cameras for the entire run of the test, which was awesome. Um, and uh, yeah. Mark, anything else? Yeah, I mean, I, there are uh, like that graphic that Snehal showed with all the different lenses that sort of qualify for large format or full frame or, or Vista Vision. You do have a lot of choices. We we had a lot of choices at the time for the lens test, and um, I I pushed pretty hard for the camera. Um, I think we had a few finalists. We knew we wanted to be really close to that thirty six millimeter by twenty four millimeter size, and. And as Snail said, the, the, the Venice is the only one that's like exactly 36 by 24. The reason for that being, there's a lot of companies that are rehousing lenses. Um, and a lot of these lenses are still photo lenses. Um, and they are becoming very popular. Um, and so it, it's that format and those lenses that have been around for, you know, almost 100 years. Wanted to stay kind of true to that. Um, because the Monstro is a fantastic camera. Um, but to, you know, to get uh, the Monstro is also has such a large image circle that um, not every lens covers it. Um, it's sort of going beyond what, what you might call full frame. So it's a tough choice. I'm sure there's going to be people that um, wish we, you know, went with a different camera. But between the 30 being really close to 36 millimeter by 24 millimeter on the LF and the fact that it's the same sensor technology, the same color science as our anamorphic test. Um, were the two biggest factors, I'd say, why we, mm -hmm. why we picked that camera. Yeah, that, I think it makes a lot of sense that you went with the camera with the same sensor technology. That's really smart because if you want to compare what you're seeing in full frame with your previous test, you know, you're using the exact same type of pixel, same pixel pitch, same color science, like you said, performance wise in terms of exposure range, all those things. And if you, and I think you guys were using the same LUX, right, that you were using before as well. Mm -hmm. So what the, you know, the output that you're seeing that's actually uploaded with the look on it, it's very, very similar. The same type of transform is happening with the smaller sensor sizes, the larger. Now, really, Aerie is the only one where the Alexa Mini and the Alexa LF Mini 
are honestly the exact same sensor technology. There's slight change in performance, but really it's the same tech. And that means that the performance is the same, the pixel pitch is the same. So even your you know, circle of confusion is the same on the lens. There's so much uh, similar uh, similarities between the two that it makes sense to, to use the same technology. Yeah. Yep. Cool. All right. So what's our next question? Okay. Well, let, you know, let's go to uh, Evan Samaras. Oh, Samaras. Sorry, Samaras. Evan Samaras. Apologies if I pronounce your question wrong or your name wrong. Um, Evan, you want to go ahead and ask your question live? I'm unable to use my microphone, sorry, no problem. I'm gonna go ahead and ask Evan's question. As someone who shoots primarily on 16 millimeter film in the S16 format, what are my options for anamorphic? I understand that the two, two times anamorphic lenses will take me to a 2.66 plus ratio. Do I have options other than Hawk Elites, which uh, appear difficult to find? Or is my only other choice to do what director Darinovsky did simply by boxing it down to 235? I do not have a video to be seen, I'm afraid, thank you. So the question um, is about in the S16 format, what are my anamorphic choices? Yeah, just like we were talking about with full, with full frame anamorphic, it's 16 millimeter anamorphic is another place where there sadly are not a ton of lens options. Um, I, Hawk, I believe makes 1.3 um, times squeeze uh, anamorphic lenses for, for Super 16 and they have very wide uh, focal length. So you, you can still get a really wide perspective. Um, I'm not sure if Panavision does that. Sadly, there are not a lot of options. Of course, yes, you can just crop, but the whole thing, especially with Super 16, is it's already a small negative and you don't want to throw away, you know, too much um, resolution. So, it, you know, to, it is nice to be able to use an anamorphic lens to get that wide aspect ratio as opposed to, you know, cropping, which is just throwing away information. But other than the Hawks, I, I, I don't know of any other. I don't. That's the same problem that people had when all the sensor, digital sensors were more 16.9 shape and there wasn't the squarish shape that the Alexa has. Right. Before that, you know, you had the same issue with anamorphic. You really, if you use two to one anamorphic using such a tiny part of that sensor that uh, you were throwing away too much resolution. Yeah. So, yeah. So you might have to, um, Evan, jump onto a larger format and go shoot more expensive film. <laughs> and rent more lenses <laughs> yep. and try them out. Very cool. Uh, great. So um, any other uh, questions? I'm, we're going to give you a last chance in the chat to ask a, a question. Um, Tony or Kat, is there somebody that we're missing that uh, you really want to highlight? I think we did a pretty good job of uh, answering a lot of questions. and um, I think we got most of them. Great. Great. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you. I want to thank everyone on behalf of uh, Zeiss and, and uh, uh, Mark and Brent for joining us, uh, Old Fast Glass, ShareGrid, um, and also the, the full frame lens test, which, you know what, guys? Now is a chance to announce. When is it coming out? Everyone wants to see it. <laughs> I was so nervous now's that you were going to ask us that. Now is the chance. Uh, <laughs> right now, our tentative date is June 8th. Uh, we, you know, thanks to COVID-19, things have obviously changed for everyone. Um, our, our post facility, not to make excuses, but I have to just explain our post facility that we used last time, obviously shut down. So our poor, amazing editor, uh, post supervisor, Nick has taken it upon himself to take all of that footage. Like we're talking, I don't know how many terabytes of footage home and editing everything on his own system. So uh, it has slowed our process down a little bit, but uh, we are determined to get it out to everyone. So right now uh, we're aiming for June 8th. We will have an official date soon once we can kind of, you know, really determine. But I, I, I think it's going to be June 8th. <laughs> I'm trying, trying no, for it. No worries. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a wonderful tool that is it'll be used for a very long time. So yeah, okay. it'll be amazing. I mean, delayed. If we're hopefully we're not in quarantine, but if we are, at least it'll give everyone something to nerd out uh, with for a very long time while they're home, just looking at all the lenses. That, that's what I would we would love to have is to have it out for everyone while they're kind of have all this free time. So, uh, but yeah, stay tuned. We will have an update very soon. Very cool, Mark. Any parting words? Um, yeah, I I guess. I just to, if for those who don't know um, about anything about the lens test, just real briefly, 
Um, we've tested now 40 sets of lenses. Um, our most recent test was 20 sets of full frame lenses. Yep. Um, and it's a side by side apples to apples comparison um, where, you know, we just want people to have this tool to be able to compare lenses side by side to choose the right lens for a project. And we, one of the most amazing things is there's a quad player where you can select four different lenses um, or the same lens at four different T-stops if you want. Um, you can compare anamorphic to full frame because oh, it's backwards compatible with all our sets, but it's a tool for people to prepare for their projects. So a producer, what a lens looks like, why they should spend more money on this or that. Um, and um, and it's, it's free and the quad player is amazing. And um, I, I really can't wait to get um, the, the latest uh, full frame lenses out there for everyone. We got 20 sets. It's the biggest test we've ever had. Yep. Um, and uh, thank you to Zeiss for helping us out with it. Um, it, was, it was really amazing. And we're, ex we're so excited to get this tool out there into the world for everybody. Yeah, I yeah, mean, that's, why, that's why we made it. We're, we needed something like this for our own personal projects. Uh, and, to, and to have that shorthand with, uh, you know, a director or um, another colleague or a producer, uh, by taking taking them to this resource to kind of show why you want to spend the extra money on Canon K35s uh, is a huge, you know, reason why we did this. So, um, and also in that quad player, when you click play, all four of the videos that you have selected play simultaneously and they're all in sync. So when the model turns left, they all turn left at the same time. So you're really seeing a good apples to apples to apples to apples comparison. Just make sure you have good internet. That's the last thing I would say. Yeah, great. <laughs> and I just want to remind everybody that uh, Zeiss has a number of full frame options uh, available. We have starting with the CP3s, we have CP3 lenses and more affordable mm -hmm. cinema primes. Uh, we have Supreme primes, which are high end uh, full frame. You know, the successor to the Ultras and Masters is right over here. We have a special version of the Supreme primes, which is cool and crazy. And we have a video on that explains it, which is the radiance, which has uh, flare characteristics. And you guys tested this as well. So we, we, we tested everything except the radiance. We yeah, sorry. <laughs> almost, we, we've done master primes, supreme, CP2, right. CP3s, compact zooms. We've tested yep. almost every lens over, over the years. Sense. Um, unfortunately, the radiance lenses were not ready in time for the the test. Yeah, but uh, we do, that's not a problem because but we know, do have the that, that just means that we'll all have something to do when we're done with uh, yep. this uh, pandemic. <laughs> we'll get together and test some radiance lenses. But there we go. Yeah. just yeah. want to leave everyone that information. And Tony, can you take us out? Hey, thanks everybody. I'm glad you're all here. Um, it, great presentation today. Make sure to watch your emails because we're putting out emails weekly with uh, some additional webinars that we're doing, uh, finding that a lot of people are enjoying this kind of conversation. Thanks to Mark and Brent for joining us today. Um, and that's about it. Thanks everybody. We're going to wrap this up. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye. It was a Bye, pleasure. Everybody. Bye.